Botry Opteris. Botry Opteris is a fossil pteridophyte. This fern was the fossil of this fern was found in the upper Carbonaceous deposits, the cold swamp deposits across various regions of world. Various organ fragments of Botryopteris were used to reconstruct the entire plant and it was found that this fern was a very small fern that is it was a coneopterid fern in comparison to the ferns of Maratialis which were actually tree fern, large fern. So this uh, Botryopteris is quite a contrast from the uh, ferns of Maratialis. Hello friends, I am Dr. Ayantika Das and in this video I am going to discuss about a fossil pteridophyte Botryopteris. Already I have started this section of fossil pteridophyte. I have made another video of Rhinia, another fossil and link to that video I have put in the description. In this video I am going to discuss about the overview of Botryopteris, its morphology, anatomy and various fossil forms of Botryopteris. So let's begin the video. Botryopteris, it uh, taxonomically it belongs to division Polypodiophyta and class Polypodiopsida. That is quite typical for all the forms and Polypodialis uh, order, uh, this, this order earlier it belonged to order Filicalis, that is why I have put in bracket and uh, family it is Ophiglossaceae and subfamily Botryoidae. So, our topic of discussion is today is Botryopteris. Now, there are many species of Botryopteris and they were actually, the, the fossils, they were uh, differentiated with the help of their um, growth habit as well as their, uh, the external uh, exine uh, ornamentations on the basis of the exine ornamentations, they were also differentiated. So, these are the species that are commonly found uh, in the fossil forms of Botryopteris and uh, it is a, a terrestrial fern, a woody in the habit and it is a coneopterid fern which means that it is a small fern as compared to the um, ferns of uh, Maratialis. This um, coneopterid ferns, they are very small in size and uh, it is terrestrial and it has got three growth forms like some of the Botryopteris species are epiphytic which means that is they grow on the branches of plant and complete the entire life cycle there just like the orchids so it is an epiphytic and epiphytically it is found to be growing on tree ferns like Gramopteris and Saronias. These are the two tree ferns on which uh, Botryopteris is found to be growing epiphytically. It is also found to be growing as a hemiepiphyte. Now what are hemiepiphytes? Hemiepiphytes are those plants that begin their life as epiphyte but later they grow uh, roots that reaches the ground. So these are the hemiepiphytes. So such form of Botryopter is also found and they are also to be found to be growing as epipetric form. Epipetric forms are also uh, though uh, actually they are those forms that they are um, grow on rock. So this epiperipetric Epipetric, sorry, not epiperipetric, and this epipetric species, they can also be called a lithophyte. 
that is those growing on the rock and we know that uh, lithophytes they either grow on the surface of the rock or grow on the crevices of the rock so based on that the first category that grows on the surface is called epilithophyte and those that grow on the cracks they are the endolithophyte these two type that is epilithophyte and endolithophyte we are also uh, found this form in while uh, studying lichens i have made videos on lichens also you can go to my channel and watch those videos so this botryopteris they had got three uh, growth forms that is epiphytic hemiepiphytic and epipetric so another most uh, characteristic feature of this botryopteris is their epiphyllous shoot as the name suggests epiphyllous it means that uh, the shoots they develop from the foliar um, lamina or foliar structures so those shoots that develop from foliar structure they are called epiphyllous shoot and they are one of the characteristic feature in some species of botryopteris now botryopteris as it is abundant in the carboniferous period so naturally they are those ferns that are found in the cold swamp area they are contributor of the coal deposits that we find and in fact they the fossils uh, of such ferns which are uh, carboniferous which uh, contribute to the coal formation these ferns are actually uh, some uh, some of uh, portions of this fern they get preserved in the coal ball areas in small coal balls and in fact various uh, organs of botryopteris has been found to be in the coal ball and by uh, this uh, peel technique of uh, uh, after the slicing of the coal balls uh, the peel technique is done and these uh, peels they are studied under microscope to find about the anatomy as well as also the um, external structure of the of the uh, fossil so sir so our study is based on such research work the um, the peel technique and uh, these fossils those which are um, ferns they have a very soft body but they are preserved just uh, um, because of the per mineralization we know uh, that uh, mineralization can be um, either by ad uh, addition of silica from the surrounding rocks that is silicification or carbonification or it can be pyrotization where iron and sulfur uh, it replaces the organic matter in the fern and so in by these three processes uh, though the fern a very uh, soft bodied plant it usually it is getting preserved by this mineralization so uh, this this is the picture this is one form of here we see this is one form of botrytium and uh, we are saying that it is repeatedly branched and uh, it does not have a foliar structure whereas this this uh, species of botrytium here it is having many foliar appendages and with perfect pinna and in fact this one here this pinna is the fertile pinna so we see that the fertile and the sterile pinna they are interspersed and this this is the this is a plant of sarmonias the tree fern sarmonias on uh, this uh, on this plant of uh, saronias uh, this botrytium is found to be growing epiphytically so this is the epiphytic host of so, botrytium uh, the geologically uh, we see that uh, the various form of botrytium they are found to be mostly growing in the carboniferous period that is this period this is the carboniferous pennsylvanian and mississippian so uh, the, during the, this carboniferous period which is divided into pennsylvanian and mississippian uh, 
and this uh, fern is usually found during this period and there are many versions that like this rotli gentes atumian and the virgil uh, virgilian these are uh, various uh, these are the carboniferous period in various continents uh, the carboniferous uh, period in uh, american continent is divided into pennsylvanian mississippian likewise uh, this uh, rotligentes and the ottonian the virgilian these are also various uh, uh, P, uh, various sub periods of this uh, carboniferous period in various continent so we see that only this carboniferous period is the major majority of the fossils were found during this period and also a little bit in the permian period so fossil record has been found from uh, various continents like for example uh, this fossils were found in the continent of north america in ohio in the continent of south america that is the maranho basin in brazil it is also found in europe that is in germany and central europe we find this fossil in uh, asia also in china here here also we find this fossil of botrytium so we see that uh, this uh, botrytium fossil has been found in the new world that is in the northern south america and in old world it is found in europe and also asia only continent that is left is africa australia and antarctica these continent so far no botrytium fossil has been found and this botrytium fossil those obtained from the coal ball uh, peel uh, actually uh, they are made into thin slices coal ball slices and this uh, coal ball from the coal ball slice from the surface cellulose acetate peel technique is used and that peel is put under microscope to study the anatomy as well as morphology of these fossil plants the fossil forms we will be discussing only uh, only three fossil forms of botryopterus in this video and um, the first botryopterus species is botryopterus nolli that is found in the maranho basin of brazil the desert area and here uh, this uh, one of the characteristic feature of this fossil form that is a botryopterus nolli is that uh, it the root the root the shoot as well as the epiphyllous uh, branches they form an association in such a way that they form a false trunk a marginal false trunk ar around the uh, trunk of uh, this three fossils that is gra uh, gramaptoteres and saronias so these uh, two tree ferns they their um, their uh, trunk is surrounded by this false trunk of uh, this epiphytic botryopterus nolli and this entire uh, structure was found in the coal ball and by uh, peel technique this was found this interesting feature of false trunk and uh, this false trunk is a characteristic feature of botryopterus nolli this is the picture of botryopterus nolli here that is found to be growing on the surface of the uh, tree ferns and this is the this is the sporangia that is born on the lower surface or the ventral surface of the leaf and note that uh, this is this is the annular region this portion and so this is also the annular region we see that the annulus here is not uniseriate but it is uh, bi or multiseriate and this is the tree ferns uh, picture and these are all the all the transverse section of the cellulose acetate p so another species is the botryopteris tridentata 
and this is found in America that is in the Baxter Spring area of Kansas. We know that it is famous for the mining area and so in this Baxter Spring area we find this fossil and then we find another fossil, um, both uh, the Botryopteris nolli that I discussed in the previous slide, as well as this Botryopteris tridentata. All the uh, it uh, contained. It is a complete fossil. It contained the root, shoot, as well as the uh, as well as the leaf uh, structure. And then we are going to discuss about the Botryopteris. Forensis. Botryopteris forensis, it is also found um, in, Euro, uh, in America. Alongside America, it is also found in Europe also. So this, uh, this is a, a multi uh, place, uh, it is found in multiple places, this Botryopteris forensis. And in fact, the for paleo herbarium of this uh, Botryopteris, it is actually uh, in public display in University of Alberta. And so basically, we are uh, we see that there are three fossils that are much uh, of Botryopteris that are much researched and. Botryopteric morphology. So uh, this is the picture. These are the picture of uh, two uh, forms of two species of uh, Botrychium where we see that a uh, body is divided into rhizome, the foliar portion and the root. Here we see that this is the rhizome. This is the rhizome portion and from it th these are the uh, this this region these are the folias region and these are the reproductive region and uh, here in this diagram no root is shown but actually roots are also present so rhizome that is the shoot portion they may be either creeping or uh, that is growing um, close to the uh, surface of the ground creeping or it can be ascending or it can be completely erect but whatever be the growing form growth form it is very stout and cylindrical in outline and it is covered with it is protected by hairs or trichomes and this hair and trichomes they can be uniseriate that is made up of a single sheet of cells or it can be multiseriate that is made up of many layers of cells so here's can be two type uniseriate and uni a uh, single uniseriate layer of cells in the hair or it can be a multiseriate where we see many layers of hair so many layers of sheet of hair uniseriate or multiseriate can be found and the immature region of the rhizome it is protected by dense covering of hair which is also called ramenta this ramenta is quite common in the ferns in fact they protect the growing tip so uh, the rhizome just like other ferns it is divided into internodes and the rhizome it is it is dichotomously branched and the branches they uh, as well as the main shoot they actually intertwine with the and they also the, the stem the the rhizome as well as the stem branches as well as another branch that is the branches from the leaves that is the foliar um, branches they together they form a uh, false trunk around the uh, around the trunk of the tree they are growing epiphytically on this main function of this false trunk is just to um, uh, just to attach to the host uh, plant very uh, tightly and this false trunk is one of the characteristic feature of this botryopteric morph uh, plant
and this um, this fo uh, apart from this false trunk uh, th uh, there is also another characteristic feature is the uh, the stem that arises from the foliar member that is this this this, this port, the region that is this is the this is the this is a, f a foliar uh, region uh, and this uh, from this foliar region this entire um, stem like uh, portion is arising which in turn it gives rise to another small uh, uh, cluster of leaves so this is the foliar this uh, in red i have drawn this is the foliar uh, uh, stem and uh, this foliar uh, stem they are found in botryopteris forensis and trisecta but not in botryopteris non. So uh, earlier I was talking about the rhizome morphology now I'm going to talk about the rhizome anatomy where we see that it has got an outer epidermis which is a single layer of cell and this epidermis has got a, a, a cover of multicellular or multiseriate or uniseriate these are the hairs or trichomes that are present and inner to the single layered epidermis we find there is a massive cortex region and depending upon the type of species this cortex region is either parenchymate to us with patches of sclerenchyma or it uh, entire cortex is divided into outer as well as the inner cortex where the outer cortex is clarenchymate to us that is it is uh, functioning just like a hypodermis and the inner cortex is parenchymate to us with patches of sclerenchyma for support so there are two type of cortex one is a divided another is a undivided cortex depending upon the species and inner to the cortex is the stellar region and the stele it is from prote uh, protostele to solenostele and also intermediate ectofloic siphonostele so these uh, three type of steles are found in the various species of botryopteris about the petiole that is the rachis um, or petiole uh, it is in transverse section it is kidney shaped in transverse section and from a single pet, uh, petiole uh, or rachis we can see we can uh, see that there are many primary pinna arise and from this primary pinna again secondary pinna arise this is how this is the diagram where a uh, section were made of the ratches and we see that from the, uh, a single ratches here uh, secondary ratches that is this uh, secondary ratches here sorry the primary ratches is growing and from this primary uh, uh, pinna or ratches uh, we are seeing that uh, secondary pinna these are the secondary pinna so this is basically the ratches uh, this is the ratches, this is the primary, this is the primary pinna which I, which I am writing as PP and this is the secondary, this is the secondary pinna. So this is about the uh, how the ratches is getting divided and subdivided and and then we see that uh, the in transverse section this is the transverse section of the kidney shaped kidney bean shaped ratches where we see that the, it is a semicircular and they have got a here we see that they have got a w shaped stellar region the, form, the stellar region uh, this is we see that the form can be monomorphic or dimorphic monomorphic means same um, same morphology whether it is a fertile or vegetative form they have the same morphology and the dimorphic form the dimorphic form where the pina the pina can be different fertile pina is quite different from the vegetative pinna in this diagram we see that this one that i'm uh, circling in red is the sterile pinna 
here and the the pinna that I am drawing in yellow here this one this one is the it is the uh, it is the reproductive or fertile pinna so uh, this uh, pinna fertile pinna they uh, bear sporangia on their lower surface or the ventral surface and sometime a characteristic feature of this uh, frond is that they can produce this epiphyllous branches that is branches that are produced from the leaf and uh, this type of um, from uh, cowline to foliar again to foliar to cowline cowline means practically the stem so this type of uh, alternative leaf it occur that is from the stem uh, leaves are produced and from the leaves again the stem are produced so this type of um, alternative uh, formation that is from cowline to foliar and again from foliar to cowline this is a characteristic of botryopteris that i have been repeating so many times so this front, uh, if it is very uh, immature, then it have a sarcinate type of varnation. That is, it will be helically coiled. Just like the ferns, we see that they are helically coiled. This type of sarcinate fen varnation has been found in immature front of Botryopteris also. And the phyllotaxy, uh, it is, it has got a helical phyllotaxy. That is, they are helically arranged, and the leaves we see that they can be bipinnate or tripinnate, depending upon the species. At the venation, venation of the pinna is open dichotomous, which is also called fork. Then we come to the root portion. Uh, this is the transverse section of the root and we see that uh, in the transverse section of the root, the epidermis which can be seen in certain portion uh, does not contain any, does not contain any uh, trichome or here. And next to the epidermis, this is the epidermal region. This is the epidermal region. Next to it, we have a massive cortex. And this cortex is parenchymate to us. I know this slide is in black and white and it is very difficult to observe the parenchymate to us uh, cells. But uh, the cortex is parenchymate to us. And inner to it, this portion, this portion is the stellar region. So, this tele is basically protostelic and we see there are many uh, two types of xylem that is the metaxylem and the protoxylem and here we see that these are the this, this that I am uh, circling here these are the leaf traces and also we see this one is another leaf trace. So we see that the uh, in the outer cortical region we have leaf traces. Now about the reproductive structure of uh, Botryopteris, where uh, we see that these these are the picture of sporangia here this pendulous sporangia they are found on the lower surface or the adaxial abaxial surface of the of the non foliar fronts what the non laminar fronts non laminar fronts are those where the pinna the pinna of the leaf is absent only uh, the vein uh, portion is present and on the lower surface of the vein the uh, sporangia is found to be hanging and usually 8 to 10 sporangia occur in a group called the sori and uh, this uh, sori it is protected by the inducium in a uh, false inducium where the lower surface of the leaf they actually protect they roll and protect the sporangia so this is the sporangia and this is how the leaf is getting rolled to protect the uh, sori and the sori in structure it is sub spheroidal or ellipsoidal or even reniform so we see that the sori 
of uh, the sporangia they are variously shaped but the sporangia they are stalked and the stalk is multi serrate so we see here the stalk of the sporangia we see that it is multi serrate massive structure that is it has uh, got multiple layers and this is the annular region here these are the we see that the, this is these are the annular region this one is also the annular region this one that i'm writing a this is also the annular region with thickened wall we see that the annulus has got thickened wall and the sporangia it is surrounded by protective layer and contains inside it many uh, haploid spores there is a wide variety in the spore they can have this uh, tetrahedral triradiate like uh, structure here we see that they have got a triradiate like structure and tetrahedral shaped it can be spheroidal and uh, the spheroidal are either they have a radial uh, type of markings so uh, we see basically uh, the various uh, species of botryopteris they have various shape from spheroidal to tetrahedral it can be it, ha it can have a radiate to trilete type of marking it can also be monolith about the exine sculpturing which is very important these are the exine sculpturing we see that this one this verucate then here we see the rugulate uh, so these type of exine sculpturing they help in identifying or differentiating various species of botryopteris in fact Botryopteris americana and globosa they are so much different in their exine sculpturing they can be differentiated even by the um, the exine sculpturing on the uh, on the spore so we know that any spore it has got a internal intine region that i am drawing in red and externally they have an exine the exine is a hard part and they have got various type of ornamentations on their surface and these ornamentations are is basically the exine sculpturing that i have been talking about and in fact not only the tridophytes but also in the angiospermic plants this exine sculpturing help in differentiating the species of a genus so uh, some species like uh, uh, Botryopteris forensis, uh, no um, spore has been found. In fact, most of the fern uh, Botryopteris spore, they are uh, spores are mostly incompletely preserved because as because the sporangial wall they have dehesed and uh, uh, only few uh, spores in good condition were left so that is why even so far we haven't got any spore of um, botryopteris forensis but uh, other uh, other uh, species of botryopteris the uh, spore was found and this actually the spore they were uh, studied by maceration of the sporangia in hcl that is a two percent volume by volume hcl they were macerated and then uh, the spore spores were liberated from the sporangia and later uh, by this technique the extra exine sculpturing as well as the uh, markings as well as the shape of the spore were studied so, uh, this was all about botry of is, which is a uh, fossil pteridophyte. I have started uh, the fossil pteridophyte section where I have started it with Rhinia and I have put the link uh, to that video in the description. Also, I put all the pteridophyte video uh, link in the description and I have also made videos on other botany topics, BSCMSC botany topics the, like uh, algae, fungi, bacteria, lichens, cyanobacteria, lichens and bryophyte and pteridophyte fine you can go to my channel and watch those videos if you like this video please share it with your friends and please do subscribe because your subscription encourages me and if you have any uh, doubt or you want me to make any uh, any um, 
any video on any topic so you can write it in the comment section and again thanks again for this watching this video